being invaded by Islam. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's, well it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's true. That's, that's, that's yeah. uh, just the way it is. And, and uh, But what I'm saying is that there's multiple layers of this, and we've, a long time ago, we've had the spread of Christianity up here, much in the same way as, as, as the invasions we can see today, but they were, you know, happening thousands of years ago in some cases as well. Um, sure. But this incredible spread there, and if, and if the roots, if you will, not to maybe all, but lots of it goes back to the suppression of sex. Was this it totally does. Uh, was totally. this an instruction that the Arkhams gave to the elite priest class at the time, or was this something that was a consequence of the fact that they themselves were were, were, were damaged or hurt in some way? I know that that's like uh, close to impossible to know. But what's your hunch? What's your what's your take on on that? The, uh, one, the one thing fed the other. You can run around like a dog chasing your tail, Henry, trying to figure out what came first. Right. You know. Right. The one thing fed the other. There was a need for men at a certain point uh, to uh, just as human beings and maybe as uh, for some reason neglected or rejected human beings to assert their power. They needed an excuse to assert their power so they were vulnerable to this archonic influence and to the lies that came through mainly channels, through channelers. Watch out for channelers, you know, mm. because it's channelers in the, the soothsayers of the ancient Chaldean world who brought in this Anunnaki script in the first place. The Narcons brought this story to our species through channelers, psychics. Mm. So I'd like to uh, take just uh, to, to address what you just said and to bring it around to something really, really important. I'd like to take, like, if I can say, just about five minutes to do that, which is about the problem. Yeah. Because the Abrahamic religions is about the problem. And then I'd like, if we can steer the remainder of this, uh, uh, this, uh, second half, into the solution. Absolutely. Okay? Yeah. The problem, a great deal of the problem, as the Gnostics identified it, is Abrahamic religion. And they gave us a brilliant analysis of Abrahamic religion, and, and one of the amazing things about their analysis is that they pointed out that it has a parapsychological origin. So according to them, the Abrahamic religion program of the chosen people, the paternal father God who is entirely male, who uh, the the uh, removal of the divine uh, feminine from the creation process, uh, the divine Messiah, Savior who comes, uh, the glorification of suffering of the Savior, the the victim perpetrator game between Savior and saved, um, and the end of the world scenario. All of that, uh, those elements, were of a parapsychological or extra human origin. They were an implant of the archontic powers into the human mind, uh, an alien implant, as Castaneda suggested. You know, they give us their mind. There's an alien implant. And that alien implant was like a mental virus. It is a mental virus. And it had to come to humanity through a vector, like any other virus. Now, there's nothing, it's, this has nothing to do with blaming the Jews, because the ancient Jewish people and the Jewish people living today, who are genuinely Jewish, not the ones who just claim to be, uh, have nothing to do with the cause of this problem. It just so happens that it was in an ancient Jewish sect that this vector planted itself. That's the way it worked out historically. So there's a moment in history when parapsychology and ex exopolitics and extraterrestrial influence comes into history into our history and turns us away from our connection to the divine Sophia, from our connection to our own sexuality as a source of pleasure and beauty. And believe me, folks, pleasure and beauty is what it's all about as far as Sophia is concerned. If she had her way entirely, we would just live in pleasure and beauty all the time because that is her dream for us. We get turned away from pleasure and beauty turned away from the healing powers of our own bodies by this Abrahamic archontic virus. Okay? Mm. And as you know, I describe the history of that in quite a lot of detail in my book, Not in His Image. Now, I want to bring this right up to date now because I want to come into the present. And one of the messages that I'd like to put out to people in this interview is that there is no more time to get involved in the problem. It's time to get involved in the solution. We've been looking at the problem for a long time, and it's a complex problem. And I 
have great admiration for the sleuths and detectives and investigators and researchers, like myself, who have meticulously gone back into the past and looked at the problem and tried to figure out how humanity could reach the psychotic nightmare that we appear to be in today and how this massive mind control scheme could have been established. But I submit to you that we already know all we need to know about the problem. It's time to really concentrate on the solution. And a key factor in getting to the solution is 9-11, really a key factor. Mm -hmm. I would say that the riddle of 9-11 is like a riddle. The event of 9-11 is like a riddle presented to humanity that our own madness has presented us with a riddle. Our psychosis as a species, our alienation from the divine source that it, we're standing on and from the divine source of the Pleuromic Center has driven us into a psychotic state and that psychotic state has blown up in our face with a riddle. And we cannot get to solution unless we solve that riddle. Now, I just want to point out this about 9-11. We're coming around to the 10th anniversary. Yeah. And what I see happening, and this is just my observation, other people may agree or not, I see that there is going to be an orchestrated and manipulated attempt to absolutely crush and bury the 9-11 truth movement. Mm -hmm. And there's very devious things going on. There are people who are betraying the movement who are probably planted there to do so in the first place. And there is going to be an attempt by the official powers to celebrate the 10th anniversary and say to the world, well, it was awful and we all agree, but we're going to go beyond it now. Let's put that behind us. And let's go on with the official version and let the authorities take care of us. That's right. And, there, and I want to point out that one of the factors that's going, but that's not the way I see it playing out, my friends. I don't see it playing out that way at all. I see the 9-11 event exploding. And I'll tell you why I do. Because we have a fuse. We have been provided by a fuse to blow the 9-11 riddle right open. So that it blows a hole in the human psyche that we can move out of psychosis into a sane way of life. We have provided, been provided by a fuse. And the fuse is lit and it's burning. And that fuse is the work of Dr. Judy Wood. Right, 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 right. That's right. Now, some of you are sympathetic, and I am too, are sympathetic to the 9-11 truth movement. But I have to tell you the very sad and unfortunate news, or at least this is John Lash's opinion, that from its inception, and especially from the third or fourth year, the 9-11 truth movement became a controlled opposition and was deeply penetrated by COINTELPRO. The proof of this is in the position taken by Stephen Jones and Richard Gage regarding the work of Judy Wood. Mm -hmm. By the way that they respond to the evidence presented in her book, and the evidence is evidence, her book has more evidence about 9-11 than anything that ever written or probably ever will be. She does not speculate. She does not theorize. She presents the evidence of what we actually see there. And, and they will not face that evidence. That proves that they are COINTELPRO. They are part of a controlled opposition. So I would suggest that when we correct our perception about 9-11, based on the fantastic work and truly sober and scientific work of Judy Wood, we have a breakthrough toward the correction of our species, and that also leads to the breakthrough of Sophia. The two things are really, really closely related. But we have to get through 9-11. We can never put it behind us. We have to get through it. And this is how we get through it. I can tell you in one sentence. The 9-11 truth movement, which is controlled opposition, has claimed what? Oh, the official story is wrong. The buildings did not come down because they were hit by airplanes. They were brought down Buildings came down in a controlled demolition due to thermite explosives planted in them, right? Mm. Have you heard that before? Oh, yeah, sure. How many times have you heard that? Thousands of times? So many times I've 
we're going to looking at other stuff uh, because it's right. you know it's interesting, but uh, you know there's other things out there well, happening as well. First of all, yeah. First of all, it's not true. It's just not true on the basis of I just said. Remember, what is the best authority in the world? It's the evidence of your own experience and the evidence of your own senses. It's not true to say that the official story is wrong because the buildings were actually brought down by controlled demolition because the buildings did not fall down. That's that right. is the truth. Right. The buildings did not fall down. If the buildings fell down, then there would have been 110 stories of rubble. That's right. And there isn't. There is at most 15 to 20 percent, absolutely most. There are maybe 12 stories of rubble. Where are the other 80 or 90 stories of rubble? Everybody saw what appeared to be the buildings falling down because of the way that the floors seemed to be removed as the buildings disappeared. But actually what happened was the buildings disappeared. And they disappeared in front of everybody's eyes. So no matter what you think about uh, CGI cloaked missiles, you know, missiles disguised as airplanes hitting the building, which I think was the case, no matter what you think about the possibility of some thermite traces in the dust, thermite, even if it had brought down the buildings by controlled demolition, could not turn steel and concrete into dust. Mm. So, Judy Woods' evidence in her case leads to one irrefutable, brilliant, clear conclusion that the 9-11 events were done by the use of free energy devices right. that are capable of disintegrating the molecular structure of matter and turning it to dust right in front of your eyes. And if you don't believe me, look at the photographs in her book. They are photographs of the building actually turning to dust. And everyone knows that. What was all the dust? Why didn't the paper burn? The, she shows irrefutably that the only thing that we know of is free energy. Now I want to come back around to the solution. And I want to pick up a point that we made in the first hour. In order for us now as individuals and as a society to realize this fantastic opportunity of Sophia's correction, to realize that it's an opportunity and what kind of an opportunity it is, we can take the riddle of 9-11. The way that we deal with this event is a key to taking responsibility for life on Earth, to taking responsibility for the future. And I think it's absolutely clear to anyone, scientist or non-scientist, that the inference of Dr. Judy Wood's Dr. Judy Wood's work, not Dr. Judy Wood's, but Dr. Judy Wood. The inference of her work is that these energy, these devices already exist. This means that some human beings have the knowledge of free energy physics. They know the laws, the principles. They know how to construct these devices. But it so happens, unfortunately, that those people are using them as a weapon against the rest of the human race and that they are genocidically insane. That is the worst possible thing that could happen on this planet. And only by facing 9-11 can we deal with it. Not by putting it behind us, not by forgetting about it, not by being appeased by the authorities who are now going to try to bury it and entomb it. Yeah. And not by being tricked by the COINTELPRO controlled uh, opposition. Well, I mean, John, let, let, let's face it. 